Well, good morning and welcome to the halfway point. You know, I really appreciate uh, your interest in taking ownership over your destiny. I think that's what you're doing. When you connect with me every Wednesday, as I encourage you to make it throughout the week. One of the things we like to do here at the halfway point is as you are logging on, we ask that you identify yourself. I'd like to know what city you're watching from and um, people already checking in, Lauder Hill Plantation, um, uh, Hempstead, New York, uh, uh, Marietta, Georgia, Lauder Hill, DC, Sunrise is checking in, Scotland, thank you, Tampa, Florida, New Jersey, Coral Springs, Key West, Brentwood, California, thank you so much. Uh, Tampa, Florida. Good morning. They saying hello, Bishop. Hello to you too. Uh, Tennessee, Tamarack, uh, Colorado Springs. Good morning. Uh, let's see. Julie, Julia from Plantation. Okay, Georgia again. Uh, North Carolina. Thank you so much. Remember, it's so important because when I get to you know to see where you're uh, watching from, it lets me know how impactful uh, the halfway point is. So I thank you so much. Now, I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I think each time you connect with me, it, it's really an opportunity for you to grow uh, spiritually and most importantly, for you to gain the strength that you need in order to finish the week victoriously. This is the purpose of me coming on Periscope it's to really empower you because I do believe that every week you will meet new challenges and it is the positive words, it is the word that is backed by the word of God that will sustain you, that will help you uh, to navigate through all the complexity of life and uh, allow you to be an overcomer. So thank you so much for allowing me uh, to be in your space. So. I want to start out with this because this is going to be a good word for somebody here today. Thank you for checking in, um, California. Um, Monday, I was really meditating on God and um, the Holy Spirit uh, spoke clearly to me and he said, go ahead and read Galatians 6, 9. And I thought about it, Galatians 6, 9, you know, he wanted me to read it and um, he told me, uh, to share this with you because uh, some of you are weary, um, tired, frustrated, um, and you're, you're just at that point, you're just frustrated with the way things are working out for you in your life. And here it is, we are in the last days of October and November is quickly approaching and you're thinking, okay, what are you going to do? You know, the year is quickly coming to a close and you're concerned because there's some things you were believing God for and uh, things are not changing in your favor. So here's what Galatians 6, 9 says, and please hear me. I don't know who this is for. You know, there are days, you know, you feel such a strong word from the Lord and I believe today, listen to me, I'm talking to someone out there, this word is for you today. The word of the Lord says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let me say it again, because I'm going to say a couple of things added to the word of God that I really want somebody out there who's watching today to understand this is a God moment. This word was sent directly from God to you because lately, yes, you're a faith person. Yes, you've been believing God. Yes, you've been trusting God. But like human beings, it, it has happened to me so many times. You're trusting God and, and in the trusting God in the pursuit of believing and knowing that God is your provider, we get weary. We get frustrated because when we look at the reality, it doesn't match the confession. Let me say it again. When you look at the reality of life, it doesn't match the confession. And the word of the Lord for you today, lady, sir, 
is let us not become wary in doing good. You've said it over and over. God, I have tried my best to do good. You speaking to God. God, I've tried my best to do good. I, 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 I don't mess with nobody. I don't curse. I don't do things. I live up to your word to the best of my ability, God. We know we're not perfect, but God, I try my best. I'm doing good. But the Bible says at the proper time, please hear me, at the proper time, you will be rewarded. You'll receive a harvest if you don't give up. So here's a couple of things that I want to share with you today. Don't get tired of doing things that are good. I know it. I'm talking to someone right now. You, you do things for your family. You do things for people. And you know, and I know, and everybody knows that the stuff you do for that person or people or whomever, they don't deserve it. You know that. You know they don't deserve it. Is anybody feeling me out there? Is anybody has ever done stuff for people and whether it's at the workplace, whether it's with family or whoever, and you know those jokers don't deserve it. Can you just say amen? Am I preaching to you? If this is you, just kind of, I need to know. I don't want to be wasting time on Periscope. Am I talking to you? Say amen. Let the church say amen. So thank you for responding. Now, this is important. The Bible says you cannot get weary to the point where you quit doing good. You may never, listen to this, according to this verse, you may never be appreciated for the good that you do. However, do it anyway. Oh my goodness. You may never be appreciated for the good that you do. Do it anyway. They may not appreciate you on the job. Do the good anyway. Your family members may not appreciate you. Do it anyway. Your spouse may not appreciate you. Do it anyway. Your children may not appreciate you. Do it anyway. I'm telling you, bless them anyway. The ministry that you're in, they may not appreciate you. Do it anyway. Whatever you do, your business partner may not appreciate you. Do it anyway. You know, I had a gentleman came to me once and he was kind of very upset and angry because, you know, he he did this this kind act, kind act for, you know, his sibling. And and it, it turned around that his sibling did him the most unthinkable thing. I mean, that literally potentially could have destroyed his career. And he asked me the question. He said, well, Henry, what should I do? I, I, I really feel betrayed, blah, blah, blah. And he was talking and I felt the anger and the bitterness. And I said to him, I said, listen to me, let me tell you something. I believe that God's going to always hold us accountable for our actions when it comes to other people. He's never going to hold you accountable for how the person treated you. He'll always say to you, Okay, I know they did whatever they did. How are you going to respond to that? How did you respond to it? Did you respond to it in a negative way or did you use my word? The Bible says a soft answer, a godly answer for better interpretation will turn away wrath. In other words, whenever you start responding in an unkind way or start rendering evil for evil, then you've opened up your life, your heart to bitterness and all sorts of works of darkness. And I told him, do good anyway. And this is what this scripture is saying, is don't get weary in doing good. If you know you're doing good, keep doing the good. Do not let the pressure of life cause you to think, I, it's not worth it. I'm not going to do it. Do good anyway. I'm talking to about a hundred people right now, and God sent me in your life to tell you today, do good. Do the good anyway. Just do the good. Not only that, you may never be appreciated for the stuff that you do. Parents, listen to me. Many of you have denied yourself lots of stuff, opportunities to buy new clothes and to live 
well and to travel and to do all kinds of stuff. You've denied yourself and you have blessed your children and given them brand name stuff and all the latest gadgets and everything. And you know your kid is not appreciating you for the stuff that you do for them. And you feel like you're done. Don't, don't do that. Do good anyway. Here's the reason why. Because the good that you do, there's always a blessing. There's always a payday. There's always a day where God's going to reward you. Somebody just posted, obedience is better than sacrifice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Whoever said that, thank you. It is always better to obey God than to let your flesh and your emotions get in the way. I'm going to tell you something. If you let your emotions get in the way, if you get ticked off about what people do to you, you will never do anything. You'll hate people. You curse people out. I'm telling you, you build walls around your life and shut everybody out. It's not healthy. Please hear me today. It is not healthy. It's not healthy to allow the actions of people to shut you down. They are not worth it. Come on, God's put enough power and tenacity in you. Hold your head up, get over it. Don't let people drive you crazy. Let people do what they need to do because some people, I'm telling you, they can't help it. I firm, oh, I'm about to say something that's gonna mess somebody up now. Some people, I firmly believe, some people are not totally right up here. And you may say, oh, I can't believe you said that. I'm serious. Some people, they're not all straight. And if you start fighting them at their level, then you have lowered your standard. You have lowered yourself to their stupidity. Come on, don't do that. Rise above that. Don't let people cause you to change your good personality. No, if people are bad, if they want to do ugly stuff, no, the Bible says you keep on doing good. So keep on loving even when love doesn't come back to you. Let me talk to you now. Keep on loving even when love doesn't come back to you. I'm talking to a lot of people out there today. The love that you give you don't get it back. You don't get it back. You don't get it back from your spouse. You don't get it back from your siblings. You don't get it back from your children. You don't get it back from your coworkers, your boss. You don't get it back. And I'm here today to tell you that what God says, you keep on loving. You keep on doing good and watch God work for you. I love that. You know, Michelle Obama said this a few uh, months ago. When they go low, you go high. You would do injustice to yourself. When they go low, then you stoop lower. You're no better than them. When they go low, hold your head up. In fact, the greatest way, please write this down, man. The greatest way to expose people's stupidity is to ignore them and to act intelligent. Woo! That's a good one right there. Whenever people, oh my goodness, are acting stupid, you put your level of intelligence into the equation and it will expose their stupidity. That's what God sent me here to tell you today. So keep on loving even when love doesn't come back to you. Keep on forgiving even when they don't deserve the forgiveness. Who is this for today? Hear me today. Keep on forgiving even when they don't deserve your forgiveness. I know what it is, man, to, 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 to really muscle up all the strength in you uh, to forgive. Some people, man, when they do some stuff, man, they, uh, I'm telling you. Has anybody ever been hurt to the point where if it was permissible, you would have choked somebody? I mean, do you, if you can connect to what I'm saying, type amen again. I, I want about a hundred people to say amen. Have you ever gotten to the point when you see people in their stupidity, you just want to, you just want to make them, 
nigga. Am I talking to anybody out there? I mean, somebody woke up this morning with stupidity. I mean, all around you. Somebody went to bed last night. Stupidity all around you. And you just feel, I know you're trying to do good. I know. And in fact, some of you, you got to hold your tongue. Do you feel me out there? You go, you just see some stupidity and some crazy stuff. You better thank God you're saved. Because if you weren't saved, oh, Lord, have mercy. You, what? You would have. But thank God. Thank God you're learning to do good, and the greater one is on the inside of you. He's teaching you. I don't know who did. Somebody should have logged on to Periscope this morning. I don't know if you got time to tell them. I just got about five minutes. I'm going to pray with you, big, because somebody needed this word today. Keep forgiving even when they don't deserve the forgiveness. Keep on giving when no one is giving back to you, keep on, keep on giving. I know sometimes you're like, okay, I'm giving this, I'm giving that, nobody's giving back. No, keep on doing it. The Bible says, don't become weary in well doing. Because at the appointed time, if you don't give up, God is going to bless you. So stay positive, even when negativity is the norm. It is so hard. I know it. I can tell you from personal experience, so many people are doing crazy stuff, man, that it will drive you crazy, negativity around you, but stay focused. So again, I want you to feel strong today and never feel that trying or starting over again is impossible for you. No, you can start over. Just don't give up. Remember, everything is in God's timing and he will reward you for doing good. So don't give up. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing in the lives of your people today. I thank you that you have allowed me to come in Periscope to encourage that person to stay positive to believe you that, Father, the best is yet to come. Father, I so believe if they don't quit, if they don't give up, if they don't let the environment around them change their attitude, Lord God, they're going to win. There's a big harvest coming, Lord God. I want them to see it. I don't want them to get weary. I don't want them to get frustrated. So, Father, I pray for their strength today. I pray on this day. That as they finish the week, Father, they'll go to that job with their head up. They'll become positive. Father, they'll go back home. They'll be positive. Father, with their children, the phone call that they'll receive, Father, the business meeting, whatever they're struggling with in the name of Jesus, I pray that they'll never get weary. Even for those who are financially down, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, help them to understand that you are a way maker. And Father, if they don't quit, if they don't give up, if they don't throw in the towel. Father, they will have a harvest that they will reap that will blow their minds. So we give you praise. Now let them have a great, incredible day today and finish the week victoriously. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Listen, I thank you so much. I don't know if this was for you, if this was for you, if you felt that you know, maybe it's your first time on the halfway point. We do this every Wednesday morning at 7.30 p.m. on the East Coast time. Um, maybe you've been on Periscope with me before. But if you know today was for you, would you just let me know by saying it was for me? That's all. I just need to know. I just need to know if I connected with anybody today. This was for me. That's all I need you to do. And while you're typing, this was for me. I want to encourage you to, to stay strong, my friend. Uh, if you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, thank you. Somebody saying this was for me. If you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, please join us the Sunday. Pastor Cheryl Brady is going to be in the house at the 10 o'clock service. We do have an 8 o'clock service in Lauderdale. Hill. So hope to see you there. And most importantly, next Tuesday, November 1st, I will be in Miami preaching at Jesus People Ministries. Thank you so much. Somebody say this was for me. See you in church Sunday if you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area. I love you. Thanks again. Tell somebody to go on Periscope now and replay this video. Tell everybody on your platforms, everybody in your following list or whatever. I need them to get this message. This is so important. Thank you. Peace out. God love you. Bye-bye.